When you think of 9-11-2001, you'll likely think about the Twin Towers collapsing in Midtown Manhattan. But what you might not know is that another building in New York City collapsed that day. That building was called Seven World Trade Center. Many just call it Building Seven. It also came crashing down that day. But why? What really happened? Why aren't we allowed to hear about this? Why is this seemingly being kept from us? One man is aiming to change all of that, a man who was there that day in Manhattan, Ted Walter. He's the executive director of the International Center for 9-11 Studies, who has dedicated his life to helping get answers for the families uh, of, of the events of 9-11. And he joins us now on Redacted. Ted, thanks for joining us. I have a lot of questions about Building 7. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Clayton. It's an honor to be with you. And I, you know, I, I applaud you for taking a good look at this issue. Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. We have so many of our viewers are always bringing this up, this question. And I've wanted to do a dedicated show on this question for a long time and have promised my audience about it. It's something I'm deeply fascinated by on a whole host of levels. Um, we'll get into all of like the nitty gritty details on this. But first, I just want to understand from you, why did you decide to dig for answers overall for the families of the 9-11, the 9-11 victims? Why did you want to dedicate big portion of your life to this. Yeah, so I moved to New York City two weeks before 9-11. I was just starting college there at NYU. And the day of 9-11 was actually my first real day of classes. And I think it was, you know, 15 minutes into my first class when the North Tower was struck. And so 9-11 was really a part of my introduction to the city and really colored my experience there living all the years that I lived there in my, my most formative years. And so I always had sort of lingering doubts. And then in 2006, I started digging into it um, more. And there was a lot of information coming out at that time. And, you know, in the space of a few weeks of studying it deeply, um, I, I came to the conclusion that um, Building 7, as well as the Twin Towers, uh, had been brought down by controlled demolition. And um, that the story that we've been given about 9-11 was, was totally false. And, you know, a lot of people react in different ways when when they come to that conclusion. And, and for me, I was, you know, I, I couldn't help it. I had to, I couldn't tolerate that this huge um, lie, this huge deception was, um, had been perpetrated and was sort of dictating so much of our, you know, the way that our society was organized, the, our policies, our, the, you know, just culturally, it had a profound inf impact, obviously. And so I just, you know, I, I, I ever since then, I've, had this burning desire to try to correct the record on what happened that day, uh, to try to steer, uh, help steer the, the direction of, of our country or in, in, in a different direction, in a more positive direction, um, get us away from the, the policies, the, the, the permanent war that's been um, perpetuated since. Um, and, and over the years, I've grown very close to many 9-11 family members who have been involved in the same struggle. And to this day, almost 22 to 22 years later, um, are still trying to expose the full truth about what happened to their loved ones um, and to, to, to get justice and to get answers um, and to try to ensure that something like this never happens again. Um, so it's just a, a deep sort of profound spiritual drive to, um, you know, to, to correct the record on this and, and live in a society that is, that is not governed by such a, such a profound um, deception and, and lie. Well, thank you for that. Um, that's, and that's why you're here. That's what our show is dedicated to. So you have an open forum this afternoon for us to be able to talk about this. So the, in 2006, you mentioned a lot of information was starting to come out. You started to see things that were challenging your belief system. Was there one particular piece of evidence that was shared with you or you discovered that changed everything for you? Were you in the belief system that jets hit the, or you know large aircraft hit the world trade center that's what brought it down and that's mm -hmm. what we've all been led to believe and we didn't know about building seven really at all so what, what describe for me what you started to uncover in 2006. yeah it was looking at both at the twin towers and building seven um i think in the case of building seven if if you just look at it uh your first suspicion has to be that it was a controlled demolition the way that it comes down symmetrically uh, straight into its footprint. Um, and you, you learn that steel frame buildings have never collapsed due to fire. Uh, so why did three come down in one day? And you look at building seven and, and you say, well, unless there's overwhelming evidence to the contrary, this was a controlled demolition. Um, and there isn't overwhelming evidence to the contrary. 
uh, all of the evidence points in the direction of it being a demolition. Um, the, the, some of the most like, you know, rock solid evidence relating to building seven and the twin towers, um, is the, the evidence of extremely high temperatures, um, during the, the destruction of these buildings, um, in the dust, there are, um, previously molten, uh, particles, uh, of, uh, of iron and other materials that reached several thousand degrees in temperature. There's no reason that, that those materials would be in the dust. Um, those kind of particles be in the dust if, if unless there was a very you know extremely hot event that happened in the destruction of the buildings um you actually had molten metal pouring out of the south tower uh before it came down um and and this the 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 official explanation is that this was um you know aluminum from the aircraft that had 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 melted and was pouring out of the building but aluminum at the temperature it would have reached would not be this bright yellow orange molten metal it would be it would be um you know silverish you know and and so it's right there in front of you uh and i think the thing that most that, that most affected me at that time was really understanding that the tops of the towers came down you know almost at free fall and yet which, which implies which implies no resistance whatsoever from the structure below and yet all of the materials in the building in both buildings were completely pulverized. The steel structure was completely shattered. And so, which implies a huge collision of materials. If you're going to have that much destruction, the top really has to slow down and be crushing what's below it. And it doesn't slow down as if you measure it, it just, it constantly accelerates. So the idea, the, the only thing that, that, that could reconcile the fact that they came down so quickly at almost free fall, and yet there's this huge destruction of materials pulverization of all the concrete uh is that is that it was explosives doing doing the job i think that was the, the concept that hit me the most at that time uh, but really you just have to go and look at building seven and and i think you, you know if it, I, I don't i don't want to insult anybody but I, you know i think it's it's crazy to think that that building came down due to due to scattered office fires it's 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 delusional um and i, and I know that's hard for some people to come to that come to that realization um, but, you know, I encourage people to go there and to, to go outside of their comfort zone and open their open their minds to the truth. I think our audience does that. So uh, I think this will be really interesting and eye opening for people who maybe haven't, though. I mean, and this is really interesting to think that the, the official narrative of Building 7 then is office fires, that it was sort of collateral damage caught in some of the debris that was being thrown or thrust away from the Twin Towers and that. Uh, pieces of debris would have crashed through the windows and started a fire and brought a steel building to its knees. That's what, that's the official story. That's, that's the current official story. The official story actually changed over, over the years. It, initially, uh, they said it was the, you know, the diesel uh, fuel tanks that um, pumped fuel out of them and, and the fuel ignited and it heated all the columns. You know, then they changed, the story changed to that it was probably the structural damage from the, the steel of the North Tower hitting Building 7. And then finally, they, they settled on, no, it was just normal office fires that were ignited when the debris from the North Tower hit the building. Um, so the story's changed over the years. The story is, you know, it's, it's far-fetched in the, in the extreme. Uh, the, you know, the fires were pretty unremarkable in, in Building 7. You know, they, they weren't very large. Uh, and, you know... Um, it, it just it's 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 a one in a one in a million chance you know it's it's never happened before and then when you you dig into the details of the story uh at every single step of the way this the the, the phenomena the structural behavior that they describe uh that they that they allege happened couldn't actually happen there's like a, a solid engineering or scientific reason why each step of the way their story doesn't make any sense uh so so yeah it's it's um it's far-fetched so let's talk about some of the evidence that you have here, some of the video clips. Can you walk me through what we're seeing here and explain um, on the screen what we're what our audience can expect from this? Yeah, so looking at the, the collapse of Building 7 first, um, there was two clips there. They just show it from two different angles. What you're seeing is the building uh, is, is sitting there motionless and then instantaneously goes into free fall. There's no, there's not even a transition. And this is a, uh, uh, some colleagues of mine and I just wrote a paper on this that's gonna be published next week in the Journal of 9-11 Studies um, on our website. 
but the building just instantaneously goes into free fall uh, symmetrically into its footprint. It's in free fall for about two and a half seconds or 100 feet. Imagine, imagine standing in f- near a building that's 47 stories high and it just suddenly goes into free fall like a bowling ball and just drops 100 feet. That's, that's what you're looking at. Without any sort of rumbling from an earthquake or, or something, some, some sort of alert alarm that this, or some, a, a jet hitting the building or anything. It just Anything. collapses. It just collapses. It just, it just collapses like a snap of a finger. Now they, they try, they have this elaborate story about how one column on one side of the building buckled due to some local structural failures and that set off this chain reaction. But if you, and, 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 and you do see that in the beginning of, the, of one of the clips that I showed you, you see the top penthouse in, on the, in the building falling into the building about eight seconds before the rest of the building suddenly goes into free fall. And the official story says that that's caused by this one column failing, which caused that penthouse to fall. And then you get this chain reaction of all the other columns starting to fail first in the core and then in the exterior. But if you had all that happening, you would see a tremendous amount of deformation on the outside of the building. You would see all this stuff happening. Um, and if you look at their computer models, it's a, it's a sort of a combobulated mess of columns failing. And if you look at the video, there's nothing happening. It's motionless. And then it goes into free fall. Um, and if you had a chain reaction of structural failures, you'd see sort of one part of the building start to fall first, start to like cave in first and then the other part. And then it would, it would sort of like in a very uncontrolled, messy way might start to start to tilt or whatever. But the idea that just comes straight down is, you know, is clear cut evidence that all, all the columns were, were removed at the same time. As to that upper penthouse, you know, we believe, and I think the evidence, uh, the op- the observational evidence shows that the column that was below the columns that were below that penthouse must have been cut high up in the building uh, for the penthouse to come down first. And, and then seven, eight seconds later, they took out the rest of the columns. So that penthouse coming down first was, was about sort of controlling the fall of the penthouse so that it didn't fall sort of outside of the building's footprint. If you look at the whole process, it's an incredibly clean process. And you're just not going to get that from a natural building collapse. I want to get into the why in a minute, but I want to go through some more of these videos and some of these evidence yeah. here. So among the other clips that you provide here, can you walk me through what else we see? Yeah. So I wanted to share with you a couple of clips of uh, that just showing the foreknowledge that Building 7 was going to come down. Um, there's actually many clips and there's many types of you know evidence and, and documentation of people saying, oh, this building is going to come down. We know this building is going to come down. I sent you a couple of clips. One is one was recorded by you know the CNN crew that was there, uh, and they're walking b- backwards from the building, and somebody says, "Keep your eye on that building; it's going to come down soon." The CNN cameraman says, "You know the building is about to blow up; move it back." Keep your eye on that building; it'll be coming down. Closer to the building, it was almost like nighttime. What was left of the building was a fiery hulk. The firefighters thought it might collapse. Pieces of the building kept falling. Rescue workers pushed people away from the scene. We are walking back. There's a building about to blow up. On flame. Debris coming down. In the other clip, you have uh, a firefighter, uh, David Restuccio, uh, tell Brian Williams on MSNBC that, that they had reports all day that the building was damaged and that it might come down or would be taken down. So we are on the phone with uh, New York Fire Department Lieutenant uh, David Restuccio. Lieutenant, where are you right now? I'm at the corner of Norm- Northmore Street and Greenwich Street. Can you confirm it was number seven that just went in? Yes, sir. Uh, and you were you guys knew this was coming all day? We had, been had, we had heard reports that the building was unstable and that it eventually would either come down on its own or it would be taken down. So that's just to indicate that there was there was chatter, there was discussion all day in the hours leading up to the collapse that um, that it might be that the building might be brought down. So this is not some like far fetched idea, some you know a mystery. Like it was, we have evidence that it was that it was discussed and that it was you know it, people in the fire department were, were at least hearing this that the building might be brought down. Um, so in terms of the other folks saying this building is going to come down like there's no way that like somebody is going to can be certain that a building is going to come down 
uh, at a certain point in time, and then it actually does happen exactly the way that they're predicting. The, the you know the, the the city officials started saying as early as 11 a.m. 11:30 in the morning, you know, just an hour hour and a half after the twin towers went down, that building seven was going to come down, and they were saying it with certainty, you know, five six hours in advance. Um, this is a I mean this this is a the yeah, like it's never happened before. So there's okay yes the t the towers had just come down, but you might be concerned about certain buildings in the area like ooh there's there's a risk here we need to be cautious but to be to like hone in on building seven and say this building is going to come down we got to get people out of here and then it actually does come come down in the exact manner of a controlled demolition indicates that the the warnings that were being put out that the building would come down ultimately came from people who knew that the building was going to be brought down the, you then fast forward to like a month after and you see reports in the New York Times saying engineers are baffled by the collapse of Building Seven. They can't explain it. You know, they're they're stunned. And you know, even even six years later, the people at the National Institute of Standards and Technology investigating the collapse said, "We, you know, we've had trouble getting a handle on Building Seven. They've been they were investigating it for like four years, and they're still having trouble getting a handle on it. And yet, all of the officials at the scene on the day of 9/11 knew that it was going to happen. That doesn't." That doesn't make sense. Right. And how does a CNN crew know that it's going to happen? Um, you have other eyewitnesses. In fact, my office mate, uh, my coworker, Rick Leventhal, was there. Uh, and he was interviewing at the time, if, I, if memory serves, and you can speak to this, he was interviewing an eyewitness, a cameraman from Fox News, who was there, who lived in the neighborhood and spoke about Building 7. Do you know about this clip? Do you know about this Rick Leventhal interaction? Um, I actually don't. I would love to see that clip. Um, Rick Leventhal did some some great interviews and a great commentary, very important, on the morning of 9-11 when the towers came down and said, you know, and, you know, testified to the huge explosions that that he felt and that he heard when the buildings came down. And he was asking the very legitimate question, did these buildings come down because of, of a collapse or was it some kind of an explosion? Um, so, I, you know, I can I can send you those clips. Um, but Rick was asking the right questions on the morning of 9-11 uh, before the narrative quickly changed. Um, but yeah, I'm not familiar with the, uh, the Building 7 clip involving, involving Rick. Well, let's play it here. This is, here's, a, here's a copy of this clip which shows a Fox, News, Fox News cameraman or Fox News employee who was there and watched and heard and described what he saw with Building 7. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion. Then, then the building, the rolling sound, sounded like the building collapsed. Were, were there other people? There must have been a lot of people on the ground nearby when it happened. Oh, mo where that happened, there was mostly law enforcement. I don't think there were many uh, the civilians there. And and we were standing here when when there was some sort of collapse or explosion, and everyone started running in this direction. When the building did collapse or whatever it was that happened, it was a huge explosion, a huge rumbling cloud of smoke and fire came across Church Street and then started billowing this way. And all we saw was, was people, were people running in this direction. Everyone, law enforcement people, a woman pushing a baby carriage. This is actually, a, we believe, debris from one of the planes that hit one of the towers on the World Trade Center. The FBI is here, as you can see. They had roped this area off. They were taking photographs and securing this area just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. It is compelling to hear that there are eyewitnesses who, say, who are saying they heard an explosion, almost like a controlled demolition of this building coming down. So, which brings us to the question, well, why did it happen this way? And who was involved? If CNN was aware of it, if other people were aware of it, they knew that this building was coming down. Why were they read in on it? Why were these people told that this was going to happen? And then why did it happen this way? Well, the official narrative is, of course, that terrorists struck these buildings, and that's why we launched a, a, a never-ending war, which we know the outcome of that and uh, the military-industrial complex piece of this. You, know, you can piece that together for yourselves. But why that official narrative, and then why did this happen this way? Can you talk to that? Yeah, as, as far as... The, you know, members of the media being down there and being told, I think that they knew that they wanted to get people away from the building because they knew that it was going to be brought down, whoever that was. Um, and so that that definitely involved the media 
who was there. So they were just being told, you know, get away. This building's going to come down. And if and if it was somebody a little more in the know, they might have said somebody's going to bring this down or we know it's going to come down or, the, 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 you know, they might have heard explosions. So, like, you know, it's not as if I'm claiming that CNN was sort of in on the, the conspiracy or the BBC was in on it or MSNBC, all these different news outlets that reported it that were reporting it before it happened. And there is a, the BBC, as, as you may be aware, as your viewers may be aware, actually reported the collapse having occurred 23 minutes before it did. So there, there was this, you know, the, the certain foreknowledge that officials on the scene had, you know, sort of mutated into the media reporting it, saying it's gonna happen, saying it's gonna happen. And in the case of BBC actually reporting that it did happen before it did. So, so the, the why of it um, is, you know that that's why we are that's why we want a new investigation that's why um you know what we're trying to get to the bottom of it you know the building seven is a little bit of a head scratcher compared to the twin towers why why did they bring it down people have speculated that it was um that the the 9 11 operation was planned and coordinated from building seven because you had so many um you know offices there of the secret service the cia um the fbi um, you had the 20 on the 23rd floor, you had the emergency operations center um, uh, of the New York of the city of New York, um, the office of emergency management. So um, that's one theory was to sort of get rid of get rid of the evidence uh, of, of the planning of this there. You know, the SEC uh, had an office in that building. And so there was a speculation that it was done to get rid of records, files that, that the SEC was holding, perhaps relating to the WorldCom or the Enron investigations. Uh, there's talk of gold being in the basement of building seven and people wanted to bring the building down in order to get in there and take the gold um there's sort of you you might say that there's a, a an insurance motive uh bring down the building and get get an insurance payout and, and build a much nicer building there these are all ideas that have been you know floating around for a long time you know i don't know i i, I personally don't know um maybe if i dug further i could find something out but you know, um, nobody seems to have like the, the the golden answer on that. I think that's you know why we need to have an investigation. As far as the bigger picture, the twin towers and and the rest of it, all of the events of nine eleven, um, I think you you know you spoke to it. Uh, this this uh, sadly was was a false flag attack that was meant to, uh, in my view, um, initiate the war on terror and provide a pretext for the invasion of Afghanistan for the invasion of Iraq uh, and for, you know, all of the wars, you know, almost all the wars that this country, our country has fought um, since 2001. Um, and uh, why bring down the towers? You know, was it was it to go the, you know, would planes hitting the buildings not not be enough to sort of, uh, you know, shake the American public uh, into supporting, um, you know, aggressive foreign policy? uh you know revenge um i guess whoever planned this thought that bringing down the towers and I, this is again speculation but whoever whoever planned this thought that um bringing down the towers would create just so much more shock and awe and really galvanize the public uh into into supporting you know the war on terror and the fight against al-qaeda etc um and perhaps there was you know perhaps there was converging motives as, as well people have you know, talked about financial crimes, you know, heists that were taking place inside the inside the, you know, the towers during the 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 hour that, you know, that, that the event was taking place at the World Trade Center. People have talked about the insurance uh, payouts that, um, you know, Larry Silverstein received, um, you know, uh, to, to, to then rebuild at the site. You know, I'm not I'm not saying that that's a motive. I don't know. And that's but I would like to get to the bottom of it. And I think we all we all deserve that. And you know, this is, you know, th this was a, uh, a turning point in our history. You know, um, I think that's obvious to, to say, but it continues to, it continues to, to live with us that the effects of 9-11 haven't like, gone away, even though it's, you know, 20 plus years later, like this is, this is foundational uh, to the world that we live in. And um, getting to the bottom of it could, you know, radically, um, ultimately, I think in a positive way, uh, reshape our country, uh, and set our our world in a, in a better direction, uh, one that's much more democratic, much more peaceful, much more just, um, and 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 so that's what I'm after, and I think that's I think that's what most people are after. You know, I think that this is yeah. this doesn't have to be 
if you embrace the the potential of of what exposing the truth about 9-11 could lead to this doesn't have to be a scary topic you know this can be right a positive forward-looking topic this could be the solution to a lot of problems yeah it could bring us all together and it could finally make us force us out of this endless war cycle close military bases demand change transparency at the pentagon and money funneling to the deep state and the military industrial complex it could have incredibly profound changes perhaps that's why they don't want they don't want these secrets coming out perhaps they want to keep it quiet some of the other footage that you brought forward is some of the twin towers footage tell us about what we're seeing here yeah so first of all this there, this is video footage of the north tower coming down uh sort of straight on and you can see these massive what i'm just going to call explosions shooting out um symmetrically from from both sides uh you know we are told by the official story and by outlets like like popular mechanics that this is just air pressure from the top of the building compressing and pushing air outwards but i mean i think you would just have to use your common sense uh you know and a little bit of critical thinking and and, and see admit to yourself that what you're looking at are just massive explosions uh ripping apart ripping apart the building um you also will see in this footage that the top of the building is already gone where's the top of the building like you, you don't have a, an upper section that's coming down and just crushing floor by floor what's below it the the building the top of the building has already disintegrated um it's it's powder and pieces of steel at the by this point um there's not a single photo or video of the destruction of the towers that shows the top of the building you know after the first two or three seconds. The, the top of the building was actually the first thing to go. And that's really, really interesting point because if you have two of the, you have this, this tower, the top of it, if we're led to believe that the middle is where all of the sort of molten metal occurred because of the, the intense heat from where these aircraft had hit, that you would think you would see the middle just sort of dissolving Jenga style and you would see the top going down and we'd see pieces of it falling like a, like a broken tower, like broken in half, but instead it's missing. Yeah, you, you will see it for the first two seconds or so, the top going down, but yeah, it, it, it then disappears in this dust cloud and you don't see it doing anything else. You, If you really look closely, there's some video where you can see that what's actually happening when the top starts to go down, it's not crushing the structure below it. It's actually itself being destroyed. The The, the lower part of the top is being destroyed. Oh. Right. So that's so, why you don't see it. It's, it's It itself is just like the rest of it in this controlled explosion piece. It is the top is being the top is really being destroyed first. Um, you see that with both, you know, with both um, wow. with the South Tower. And I didn't send you this footage, but I can. You there's footage where you literally see the top of the South Tower. First of all, it tilts and, and starts tipping over. So how is it going to crush all the structure below it? Uh, but then about like two seconds into that tipping process, it just goes poof. Like it literally self combusts. It, it it explodes. The whole top of the South Tower explodes in a cloud of dust as it's starting to tip over as it would have ended up on the street, you know, however, you know, however many meters away, but it just starts to tip over and then, and then it really explodes. Um, in the case of the North tower, it just kind of telescopes down and, and, and explodes, but it's gone. There's nothing left to do the crushing. There's nothing left to crush, you know, the 60 to 90 stories of structure below these upper sections. The other clip, um, that I, that I sent you is this, of the South tower really just shows you, um, if you zoom in close, you can see how, as the as the collapse begins first of all the corner of the building is remaining intact so like you see this this downward wave of explosions basically but the corner is still intact if the top of the if the top of the building was coming down and was crushing each floor below it like why would the corner remain intact and if you look closely you can actually see how like some of the floors are skipped if you really like if you really look close to that corner you see like boom 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 explosions shooting out and then like some floors are missed and then like the explosions kind of go around it so you, again you're not seeing like this process where where the top is coming down and leveling floor by floor the, what you're seeing is waves of explosions running down the building and they're leaving the corner intact the, the explosions are taking out the faces of the building and the core of the building but leaving the corner intact so that's incompatible with the story this, this fantasy really that we've been given of the top sort of crushing floor by floor. When you speak to the 9-11 families, uh, those who suffered the most on those, on those days, who lost family members, 
Did you think that it, when you started this journey that you might be somehow tarnishing the legacy of their family and that, oh, maybe I shouldn't cross this bridge. I'm seeing things that could really, really hurt their families, the family's feelings if I bring this forward. Or were you surprised? Because as you mentioned at the beginning, many of these families are providing you with evidence and coming forward and want the same sort of answers. I'm curious uh, what their response has been with this. Well, you know, for, first of all, the 9-11 families are not a monolith. You know, there's a lot of families out there uh, who uh, accept the official account of what happened on 9-11, um, who maybe uh, have a, a deep emotional connection to, to the official account. Uh, but I think by and large, most 9-11 families, um, you know, know that something is wrong. You know, a lot have focused their efforts on the involvement, the likely involvement of Saudi Arabia uh, and Saudi officials in the attacks. Uh, and, and, you know, from my, my own two cents, you know, like, a, you know, Saudi Arabia was very much likely involved in sort of managing the, the alleged hijackers to, to frame them as patsies. Um, but I think that um, the families, by and large, they want the truth. And, and like it will be for all of us, for so many of us, uh, as the truth comes out, it can be painful. Um, but I, I think m most families, all families, in a sense, want the truth. And many of them, um, they've been the driving force behind the 9-11 truth movement, whether it's the Jersey girls who were responsible for getting the 9-11 commission started or so many other families who have come forward in, in subsequent years to um, participate at events, participate in campaigns. Um, you know, th there's dozens and dozens and dozens who've, who've spoken out and particularly on the issue of the buildings being brought down by, by demolition. Um, and, and so they support this. And you know, I know that there's families who might be hurt by this, um, uh, and and I'm and I'm and I'm sorry for that. You know, I'm really I really am. Like I, I, I really sympathize with their pain. Um, but, but there's so many families out there who who feel that they haven't been given the truth and who who support this. And I think we need to keep all of them in our in our thoughts um, and re remember that they're out there and that and and for that to be a reason, part of the reason why we continue to pursue the truth. And we talked about some of the why. Like it's really the heart of it is the who, who is responsible for this. And of course, um, as the reports are a number of weeks ago, at least two 9-11 hijackers have been recruited, were recruited into a joint CIA Saudi intelligence operation. This, of course, Kit Clarenberg reporting uh, these bombshell filings at the gray zone. You can read those there as well. Um, and this was a lead investigator in the Office of Military Commissions, which was overseeing the 9-11 defendants. So the CIA involved in the recruitment of Saudi, uh, of, in the part of the Saudi operation. We know that that's part of this now. So do you have any clarity, any ideas on who specifically? Where does this go? Uh, is, it, is this an intelligence state, deep state run operation? I think it is, yes. I think that's clear. Um, now, I, I can't name names. You know, I, I don't know, you know, for sure. And I, I like sticking to what I know uh, and not, you know, maybes. But, um, you know, I think that you have to, suspect and you have to investigate the possibility that members of the Bush administration were involved in this, that uh, personnel uh, in the Pentagon uh, and in the various intelligence agencies of the US and possibly intelligence agencies of other countries as well, some of the, you know, the, the closest allies of the US, uh, Saudi Arabia being one of those and Saudi Arabia, um, you know, I think this whole area, which has been well investigated by the 9-11 families, as well as many others, uh, points to the, the alleged hijackers receiving lots of assistance from Saudi officials, from the Saudi intelligence apparatus. Uh, and, and the role that the Saudis played um, was, was to put these patsies in place. Um, I think, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of the discussion in the mainstream um, and even in some alternative media sort of ends there and, and it just sort of assumes maybe, oh, the Saudis, they were actually you know, double crossing us. They, they weren't, they're not really our friends. They just, they wanted to attack us. And, you know, I think that, I think it's time for people to go further uh, and realize, you know, that why would, why would Saudi officials just, it, it just, it doesn't really make sense. It's, it's a silly narrative when you think about it. Um, the, the, the obvious, the obvious story here is that um, certain Saudi officials, Saudi intelligence operatives were a, uh, a piece of a much larger operation, which was which was this entire false flag attack. Uh, so, yeah. Well, Ted, I could talk to you for hours about this, um, 
but uh, I want to be respectful of your time and I and the work that you're doing on this. Where can people learn more about this investigation and the progress to get to the bottom of it? Yeah, so uh, the organization is called the International Center for 9-11 Justice. It's, uh, we, we just relaunched it. You mentioned the International Center for 9-11 Studies. That was formerly the name of the organization. So the, our website is ic911.org. Again, that's, you know, five five letters, ic911.org. Um, and we, we, you know, we, um, one of our partners is the, is the Journal of 9-11 Studies. So much of the best uh, literature, the best papers that have been produced about 9-11, especially about the destruction of the buildings, but also other important aspects you can find there in the Journal of 9-11 Studies, uh, as well as the Toronto Report, which is uh, the Toronto hearings were held in the 10th anniversary of 9-11, and our organization um, organized and hosted them. And so the, that report, which features much of the best research that had been done up to the 10 year point, um, is there on, on our website uh, and, you know, a myriad of videos and, and other papers and articles and so on. So IC911.org, you can find pretty much everything um, that you, you need to there. there. Of course, there's so much information out there, but it's a really good it's a really good starting point. Uh, and we are partnering with, you know, uh, as, as I've been for many, many years with with you know, many 9-11 family members, 9-11 families. We're working actually, and I want to bring some attention to this, we're working with a family in the UK, uh, the family of Jeff Campbell, who died in the North Tower um, on 9-11, uh, to try to get a new inquest into Jeff's death. There In the UK, when somebody dies in sort of suspicious circumstances, they hold an inquest. And the inquest was finally held in 2013 and came to the conclusion that he died because the airplane hit the tower and the tower collapsed. Um, and, and, and so it was the airplane that caused it. Uh, if you have evidence that pot potentially um, undermines or could reverse the, the original verdict of an inquest, uh, a family is entitled to getting a new inquest. If there's any new evidence that emerges or that even existed then but wasn't considered at the inquest, you can get a brand new inquest. And so the Campbell family wants to get that new inquest. They, they submitted their petition for a new inquest almost two years ago in August 2021, and they're still waiting for the um, Attorney General of the UK to respond and, and give them the green light for, for this new inquest to be held. And the goal of the new inquest would be to pr present evidence showing that the North Tower was actually brought down by controlled demolition, and that was the cause of, of Jeff Campbell's death. Uh, so that's a major initiative that we're, we're helping the Campbell family with. Uh, and there's, there's no reason why it shouldn't, not, why it shouldn't go forward. Um, that we overwhelmingly uh, satisfy the threshold for the new inquest to be to be opened. Um, so there's that, and there's many other things that are going on. There's a film called Peace War 9-11 that we're going to release in September uh, that I'm helping to, to direct, uh, which covers all of the issues that, that you've spoken about, um, about uh, why 9-11 happened. Um, and, and so I, I, we're actually releasing the trailer tomorrow, so I encourage you to take a look at that and share that with your viewers. Um, so that's just a beginning point. You can find all of this at ic911.org. And um, thank you very much for, for giving people that opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely, Ted. It's been great to get to know you. Thank you for the work. Thank you for sharing these stories and for being brave um, in, you know, in trying to uncover the truth here. Um, it's, a, it's a dark place for people to look and have to admit some really dark things about our country. But we thank you for doing it. I thank you, Clayton. Um, thank you for um, you know taking this step. You know, I, I just want to say that I, I'm seeing the cracks in the in the dam form right now, and I think that this this dam is ready to break open. And I you know I think that you are are playing an important role in that. So I, I thank you. I commend you. Well, thank you, and thanks to all of our viewers for subscribing and being a part of this community here and sharing what we do here. That's really really important. So thank you, Ted. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Clayton.